Hey guys, I'm Randy Younger, and this is Matt Haberman uh, with me. We are the co-hosts of uh, Nostalgia Time with Kid Champagne, and this is a special collaboration with my show, Unger the Radar, where we talk all things film and sometimes TV. And today we're going to be talking um, about a great comedian actor uh, who sadly passed away 20 one years ago, uh, Mr. Jim Varney. Uh, you probably know him best for his character, Ernest P. Worrell, who was in about 10 films, uh, numerous TV commercials and a series. And um, he was just a, a fantastic actor, comedian. And uh, with me today is one of uh, Jim Varney's co-stars from Ernest Scared Stupid. We have uh, Shay Astor. Hey, Shay, how's it going? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Thanks for having me. So um, I'm curious, you were about an eight or nine when you were cast? Yeah, eight, I think. I think if I'm getting the dates right. <laughs> this was 1991. So now 30 years ago. Um, so 30 and, years ago, it came out, right? Yeah, yeah. The release date was 1991. And so many kids that time, you know, love that movie. It, it, it was scary. It was hilarious. It was just a fun time. Uh, I'm curious, so what, what were some of your uh, memories, your experiences on that film set? Well, we shot the film in Nashville, mm. which is such an incredible city to be in. Just there's incredible food, there's incredible music. The people are all mm. incredibly nice. And, uh, and we filmed a lot on a soundstage. So a lot of the forest stuff, you know, the, the old tree and everything that was filmed on a soundstage. So there was a lot of magic and whimsy even just in the filming yeah. because as much as you're aware of this is a movie and these are the sets and there's the camera it's still very easy to get lost in mm. the imagination of it especially wow. when you're working with people like Jim Varney and Eartha Kitt and mm. um, so it was a really really fun time and that whole crew like John Cherry and Coke Sams and, and Jim they'd all been working together for so many years yeah. that the environment on the set was very friendly. It was very much like a bunch of buddies, hmm. which made yeah. for a really easy, joyful experience. Okay. Especially when you're a kid, that, that sense of magic is so prevalent. So that, that's really cool to hear that, um, that you had a good time on set. Uh, Matt, you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. How was it working on the film with Jim Varney? I mean, he's a, com a, com a comedic legend. How was it like working with him? Well, I have talked a lot about Jim in other interviews and, and my experience working with him, but there are some interesting... One of my ear pods just fell oh, out. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the interesting things about working with Jim that I think people who don't know him and only know him as Ernest wouldn't know is that he is, he was a brilliant man. And I mean, like intellectually. He had a he, photographic memory. Yeah, he really, it, he was incredibly well-read yeah. and knowledgeable about just an extraordinary range of subjects. Mm -hmm. So, I found that out because my father was on set with me and my father is also a very in, intelligent man. And they would sit and smoke mm -hmm. and talk about everything, talk about world history and astrophysics. And, mm -hmm. and I remember the first day that I worked with Jim, my father coming to me and telling me that man is brilliant. And he was an incredibly gentle, incredibly present human being. Um, he was sweet and funny with us, with the children on set, but he was not like a crazy clown. He was a very lovely, sweet man. Like the kind of man that you'd really be happy to have your children spend time with. He, um... He definitely exuded that 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 warmth and likability, yes. and I, yes. I'm just going to sidetrack here. For um, he was in the Beverly Hillbillies, where he played, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the the patriarch of the family, and he was just so soft spoken. He had very little mm -hmm. dialogue, mm -hmm. and he seemed like such a 
such a fatherly kind man that you just want to like your father spend time with him and just hang mm-hmm. out and talk about anything and you're very what- right about that that he he was soft spoken he mm-hmm. was there was a that kind of like old cowboy vibe mm-hmm. that he just was looking out across the open plain understanding the world <laughs> he was and a special I, man i think if 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 he lived longer if he you know, pick the right project, he might have won a few awards because like, he's very, he was a very talented actor. And it's just, I think it's, you're I, really right about that. And yeah. that we missed out on seeing what could very well have been an extraordinary dramatic renaissance yeah. of his yeah. career. Because a lot of, a lot of com- comedic actors do eventually turn to drama. So it, w- it well, would be cool to see that. <laughs> there's nothing harder than comedy. Yeah. <laughs> the best comedy, the best comedic actors are often the best actors. True. True. Uh, one of my questions: What is your favorite moments working on Ernest Scared Stupid? <laughs> okay, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> I have to say, we had it was such a fun shoot. You know, there's so much fun to be had in the whole process. I. I did love doing the scene where my character Elizabeth um, is in her bedroom alone and looks under the bed Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then, you know, you know, the scene, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) that scene was, it was storyboarded. It was extremely well thought out. Hmm. I knew exactly what we were doing in every single moment. And I loved the experience of, you know, going beat by beat Mm -hmm. and knowing exactly what was going to happen. It becomes a choreographed dance (laughs) almost. And that was really, really fun. I felt like we were doing something very, very cool in that scene. I also really loved all the stuff with the tree, Mm -hmm. just because of the way that it was built on the sound stage and the lighting and everything that was a that was a really magical set and a really a lot of fun to spend time in the uh right. the, the tree house was really well constructed that must yeah. have been oh yeah so I much mean, fun <laughs> when i saw that movie as like if i wanted a tree house it would be exactly <laughs> like that well just... i can tell you that's how i felt too and i was there it was really none of the magic of that particular set was lost in knowing that it was a set. It was really, it was really extraordinary. Wow. Um, (laughs) That's awesome. So, so yeah, obviously a great time on set. Do you remember any challenges um, that you faced? Um, The biggest challenge Mm -hmm. was that there was a scene, if you remember where Elizabeth is fixing her bike Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before they run off. Well, it was originally supposed to be they were riding their bikes, mm. but I had a little bit of a bike accident oh. on oh. set <laughs> and I rode the bike. They were having us test out the bikes and I took the bike that was for me and rode it down a very steep hill mm. into a valley and crashed. Oh, God. <laughs> and, uh, and after that, they were like, no bikes for yeah. day, no bikes. Good call. <laughs> yeah, too much insurance liability. Right, right. <laughs> now, I know that you also um, worked on another show, Third Rock from the Sun, mm-hmm. as a teenage feminist character, August Leffler. How was mm-hmm. that experience? Well, it was another experience of working with legends and geniuses. I mean, if you're talking about comedic legends you've got Jane Curtin all day every day and then John Lithgow who's just one of the greatest actors ever so and then a lot of the uh the writers and producers from that show had come from Saturday Night Live Mm, so these are all people who know these are people who've built comedy Mm. like let alone they know comedy they've built it they're part of the you know, the groundwater of comedy in this country. So being around that kind of talent as far as performing and writing uh, taught me a great deal. I mean, so many great actors, so many great writers, 
Um, it was any show, any production, the lead typically is, you know, the star of your show or the star of the film is typically setting the tone mm -hmm. for how everyone's going to feel and what the vibe is on set. And John Lithgow is just the sweetest, kindest, most playful, wonderful person on earth. Mm -hmm. So he really made that. I don't know if it's just because he's been an actor for so many years and he loves it so much and he's such a genius, you know, or that he's just an incredibly kind, wonderful, joyful person, but he really set the tone and made that an incredibly comfortable, easy, joyful, fun set where he's spending so, you know, on a sitcom you rehearse mm -hmm. for a few days and then you shoot in front of a live audience. And, um, and so during the rehearsal process, watching somebody of that caliber just play around mm -hmm. physically, um, verbally and see what happens. And then the writers, the same thing, everything gets rewritten constantly. Mm -hmm. And even on taping days, the writers will come in with a new idea and to watch somebody like Bonnie Turner mm -hmm. go and run to set and tell John or Jane or, you know, Joe Gordon-Levitt or Kristen Johnston, or French Stewart, all those great actors mm -hmm. and, and give them a new line that then gets translated in the moment in front of a live audience into absolute genius and everyone's cracking up. It's really an amazing thing to see. Awesome. That another, is. another great warm set and there's the magic. Yes, yes, it's true. Um, do we, are we gonna get a, a reunion anytime soon, Third Rock? <laughs> I mean, they do, they, you know, people are still in touch and, but I, I don't think there's gonna be an actual like official reunion. Okay. Um, going back to Ernest, though, I'm curious, um, did you watch the films that came after Ernest uh, Scared Stupid? And what did you think? You know, them? I have only ever seen Ernest Scared Stupid of the Ernest films. Really? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> and my husband is like, how? We have to watch <laughs> all of these movies. So... It's great. I'll watch them with, I have a little son now, so I'm sure that I'll watch them with him. Perfect, yeah. I actually rewatched them recently and they're very, very kid-friendly, very silly and, and yeah. just a lot of fun, just like Scared Stupid, so yeah. What's your favorite? Um, I think hands down, Ernest goes to jail. That's just okay. totally wacky, just a lot of fun. Um, and also maybe a second favorite is a Slam Dunk Ernest, which gets a lot of hate. I've never uh, even heard of Slam Dunk yeah, Ernest. Ernest basically playing basketball against the NBA. It's 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 as silly as it sounds. So <laughs> okay. I would, I would okay. show that to your kids. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> My favorite was Ernest Goes to Camp, and I can relate. I used to go to summer camp when I was a kid, <laughs> so it was it was fun to like even show for everything the activities that they do in camp. Uh -huh. It was just that feeling of. Ernest goes to camp, and my set, my my third, my three favorites are Ernest goes to camp, Ernest goes to jail, and Ernest scared stupid. Yeah. Okay. Good they're a lot know. of fun. They're just yeah. They're they're really silly, and it's yeah. Actually, um, well, well, my my Ernest scared stupid was the first Ernest I saw on the big screen. Mm hmm. Um, Shay, I wanted to switch gears a bit. Uh, I know you're also a musician. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell everyone a little bit about your your musical career? Well, I started playing guitar when I was about 20. And it really was just born of, you know, I wasn't working as much as I had been used to working and as an actress. And I was bored. <laughs> you know, I didn't <laughs> I've been an actress since I was a child and I, I wanted something else to do. And I thought, oh, learn to play guitar. Maybe right. I'll become a great guitar player. <laughs> which didn't happen because I started immediately writing songs okay. and I had no real interest in being a singer songwriter, but that is what happened. So I started playing music and, you know, it just kind of happens that when you, whatever you do, you know, behind closed doors quietly, you keep working and you keep working and you keep working and it just kind of comes out. And I started meeting other musicians and, and got some, uh, 
some help and some encouragement from some unlikely sources. I ended up um, doing some demo work for uh, a punk rocker called Tim Armstrong, who used to be in the bands Rancid and Operation Ivy. And he was actually incredibly um, helpful to me in just kind of getting me started and, and, and taking it seriously. And then I started to perform and put bands together. And then, you know, it just kind of went from there. And, and music is something that, you know, you don't have any real limitations in how you can, how you can express it and how you can experience it. So I was able to do it alone at home any day. Mm. And then, you know, Los Angeles where I live is, is just absolutely chock full of some of the best musicians in the world. So it was really easy to find people to play with and find people to work with. And, you know, I've, I've just never stopped. Once I started, that became, you know, an extraordinary love of my life. That's awesome. True passion. Um, yes. Now, I'm curious though, acting and music, they're totally different animals. Do you prefer one over the other or are they pretty much the same to you? To me, they're the same. Mm -hmm. To me, they're, they're, you know, the two wings of the same bird, which is um, artistic expression. Mm -hmm. And I've, as I've, you know, grown as an artist and an actress, I've been able to create work for myself and do more performances that I've written or, you know, write my own short films and stuff like that. And with music, it's always been so much easier to do it on my own you know, I didn't need, I don't need anyone to hire me to play music, um, to record music, to perform music. I can, I can kind of create all that myself. So that's a, that's a real huge bonus of, of music, but yeah, I mean, they're just, the feeling that I get when I'm playing music is the same feeling that I get when I'm, when I'm performing, whether on stage or on film and everything is really just flowing. Mm -hmm. It's, it comes from the same place for me. So I could never give up either one. I think that's the testament of a true artist. So thank you. I know uh, with yeah. the pandemic and everything, do you miss being on stage right now? Mm. Um, yes. Yeah, I do. It's, it's um, you know, performing is, it's not the reason that I do it, um, but it's definitely, it, it, it's almost like if you paint a picture, but then you can't show it to anybody, hmm. you know? So that's been difficult, but I also have a little, a little boy who's still very young. So I hadn't been performing very much since my son was born. Um, so it's been an interesting time with, you know, being a mom and then also with the pandemic, everything's just shut down. Uh, but it's been a good time to learn new skills and just to take, you know, take some quiet time to think about what's next and, you know, develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, well, I can, yeah. I can definitely relate to that being a parent in a pandemic myself, the young child, mm -hmm. I can definitely relate to that. Yeah. But you gotta keep that creativity flowing, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so lastly, I'm just curious, uh, are there any projects right now you can discuss? Anything you're working on? There's, there's a number of projects that um, hopefully will be coming out this year, um, or at least I'll be announcing this year, um, but I'm, I'm not actually announcing anything yet. So mm -hmm. just if people can come and follow my Instagram. I, I will announce things as I can, but there okay. should be at least one music project and then a film that I wrote and directed um, that hopefully I'll be able to finish up this year as long as uh, maybe the preschools open back up. Um, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I'm just, you know, taking it as it is, looking forward to getting vaccinated <laughs> and hoping that that everyone stays healthy and, and, and we can start to, to come back to some kind of new normal. Yeah, I think right now what you're seeing on your screen, this is the new normal, unfortunately. This is, this <laughs> absolutely is the new normal. I mean, we're all doing the best we can. And and I mean, I have a lot of friends who 
made their living as touring musicians. And this has been really, really difficult for a lot of people. And it's, it's, it's fundamentally changed us all just as a people. And, and, uh, and I don't have anything to complain about, you know, my family's healthy. We're okay. Um, you know, I'm just counting my blessings every day and continuing to do my work. And hopefully, you know, I'll get to share some of that with people soon. For sure. And hopefully in the future, maybe we can have another interview in person. So we'll see. <laughs> that would be lovely. Cool. Well, uh, Matt, any last uh, questions or comments? Um, I do have uh, one last question. If Jim Varney was alive, what do you think he would be saying right now? Mm. I think Jim Varney, if he were alive, would be doing everything that he could to make the American people laugh. Mm. <laughs> I think that is one good thing, because right now, I mean, I've been hearing it from uh, many people. Everyone needs a laugh right now. Yeah. Sure do. <laughs> well, Shay, uh, thank you so much for your time today. This was amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks for having me. And do enjoy discussing that brilliant man behind oh, you. We will. Oh, we will. Thank you for being a part of his universe. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Right. Good one.